pressure going last then, no? Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, and most importantly, the remarkable graduands of 2023. Thank you for that lovely warm welcome. Um, I want to start my very short speech with a question for you. And I'm not gonna ask you to raise your hand. I'm not gonna ask you to speak out loud, but I really want you to take a moment just to think about it. So if you could describe yourself in just one word, what would that word be? So really think about it. Do you have something in mind? If you do, I am seriously impressed. More impressed than the fact that you started a degree during a global pandemic. I am fascinated by the fact that we so often need to label things and people to make sense of this world. There's a pressure, maybe a pleasure, in fitting into specific boxes like writer, linguist, media maker, Renaissance lover, or whatever it is you call yourselves in the center of Renaissance studies. But what if I told you that you can be so much more? What if, despite the degree you have just graduated with, you can be whatever the heck you want? Now, some of you may find that feeling and that choice really exciting, but I know many of you may be sitting here feeling more than a little bit nervous about what comes next, um, especially when you're letting go of one of your biggest labels, that of undergraduate. Trust me, I've been there too, literally 10 years ago. But life doesn't always go according to the plans we make or the labels we own, anyway. When I was 13, I lost all the hair on my head, face, and body in a matter of months due to alopecia. I struggled to deal with it, dropped out of school for a year, and when I returned, I tried to hide it from everyone. This hiding and feeling overwhelmed by my label as visibly different, or wig wearer, maybe even at times like a fake, was something I held on to even during my time at Warwick. But now, as you can see, I stand proudly before you as a big, bald woman. Thank you. Thank you. It wasn't an overnight transformation, but a gradual process of embracing all the things that I am. And I should probably tell you who that is, considering they've asked me to stand and talk to you today. Um, but that would be way too easy. So instead, I'm going to tell you what I'm not, and you can decide by the end of this speech what label, if any, you think I deserve. But please be kind. So I'm not a script writer or film editor, but in the last year I've reviewed scripts on behalf of a diversity panel for the British Film Institute and I've written two LinkedIn adverts about resilience and inclusion in the workplace. I'm not an actor, but I've starred in those LinkedIn ads, been cast in an ad for E45 cream, looked very emotional in a BBC trailer about the cost of living crisis, and most recently you may have seen me on Channel 4 going in circles on a pedalo in the middle of a lake in Pitlochry, Scotland. I'm not a presenter, but I have sat on the This Morning sofa, I've interviewed celebs, and I've taken over the airwaves on my local BBC radio. I'm not a model, uh, and yet earlier this year, I walked down the catwalk at London Fashion Week wearing six-inch Kurt Geiger sparkly stilettos. <laughs> and finally, I am not a public speaker, and yet, here I am. The point of this isn't an excuse to brag about some of the cool things I find myself doing of late. It's because I want you to know you are more than a label. So as you step out into the real world, I want you to remember three things that have helped me in the 10 years since I was sitting where you are now. These things have helped me resist the labels and succeed on my own terms. So here we go. Number one. Be grateful. Grateful for the people that are sitting here supporting you. Your peers, parents, lecturers, loved ones, even me. We are all here to celebrate you and what you have achieved. And we will all continue celebrating you as you now go off into the world. Maybe you start a next course, maybe you've got a job lined up, maybe you've got a temporary hiatus back home. I know some parents might be less happy about that one. Um, but the point is, you are part of a Warwick alumni community for life, and that is certainly something to be grateful for. Number two, embrace uncertainty. 
Please don't look for all the answers. Explore the questions. Follow your gut and be open to try new experiences. I didn't have a rigid formula for success when I left Warwick 10 years ago, and thank God. Because if I'd kept telling myself I was just one thing, I wouldn't have done half those ballsy things I just listed to you. That leads me on to my last pearl of wisdom, and this is one I am actively working on. It's the one trick that enabled me to get on that catwalk, to get in front of the camera, and actually to speak into this microphone right now. So number three is, learn to reinterpret your anxiety as excitement. I used to be anxious about so many things. Speaking out in a seminar, in a meeting, someone asking me, hey, are you wearing a wig? Um, and now showing up in the, in the world as a bald woman actually can be quite scary. But all that anxious energy becomes much more powerful when you choose to reframe it as excitement. Looking back on my time at Warwick, there was a lot of excitement, but I wish I could have been less worried about showing up as my authentic self, and maybe, for practical reasons, ditch the wig on the day of my own graduation because it was over 30 degrees and I was melting. <laughs> but now, as I stand before you, showing up for myself and refusing to let any label limit or define me, I really hope you can feel empowered to do the same thing. So as you move forward, feel thankful for your cheerleaders, embrace the uncertainty and say yes with excitement. I can't wait to see what you become or perhaps what you don't become. Congratulations and welcome to your next adventure.